Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's day is October 28, 2019. Time is 2.03 p.m. Put your game face on, let's do this. Let's do this, all right. This is a slightly later than normal news session, but we had enough news that we needed to, we needed, needed, needed to get it out before BlizzCon because I'm fairly certain that the next episode is gonna be 100% BlizzCon and anything that happens at BlizzCon is going to eclipse anything that happened in the weeks prior. We know this to be fact. We'll talk about BlizzCon at the end of the, end of the episode, along with any other Blizzard news that we have associated with that so far. And then next week's episode, or possibly Friday's episode, we'll see, uh, we'll uh, begin with Blizzard-related content. But, probably the, oh, there's so many, there were so many like, big news like pieces this week, but probably the most hilarious one that came out was actually Fallout 76's Prescri or prescription, <laughs> no, that's me, uh, subscription, <laughs> subscription program for Fallout First. Not sure if you guys have seen this, but Fallout First is a monthly prescription that you could pay, uh, was it $9.99 a month or uh, $100 a year. And it comes to, <laughs> it comes with a number of perks that uh, are seem pretty fucking useless, honestly. Uh, but, you could pay for it if you really wanted to. <laughs> Private servers! Alright, so, this was announced, obviously, several people scoffed at this, because a lot of these things, a lot, uh, some of the things that they're offering as part of this premium plan that they've announced, uh, are things that people expected to be in the actual game. Uh, the site that you're looking at right now, if you've picked out some of the, uh, uh, maybe some of the things that <laughs> stand out a little like the giant fuck you at the top, uh, this is, uh, actually a parody site at falloutfirst.com. Uh, now, as somebody, as somebody who used to, uh, part of my job was specifically to go and hunt down URLs for games that were launching related to the products that we were providing, specifically talking about Wowhead, uh, Lol King, stuff like that, right, Daisy DB. So my job was when Fallout, when a game like Fallout 76 comes out, I would go and secure Fallout DB or Fallout Head or something like that, right? I would just go and find the URLs I could get and I'd just buy them up, just buy them all up. That was my job. And it was amazing, it was amazing how many URLs developers don't grab for themselves. One great example of one that I picked up that the developer didn't get for himself, and I and this is and this like, totally gets an excuse. And so it's, they're totally excused because it's an indie developer uh, was a ha a hat in time. I actually owned for a period of time uh, a hat in time dot com, and that's the name of a game, right? And what I ended up doing was I reached out to the developer and I was like, "Hey, dude, do you want this URL?" Like, I was working for Zam at the time, I was like, do you want this URL? Because you forgot to grab it, <laughs> do you want it? And he was like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so I, I said, I just gave it to them. I, I didn't charge them for it or anything. Uh, I just gave it to them because it was like $10. So I was like, whatever. Uh, well, apparently that's something that the folks at Bethesda don't really focus on at all, which I guess I kind of understand, but at the same time, it really leaves them open to shit like this. It really, really does. Now, technically, it's not Fallout 1 ST, so I guess it's not really the same, but it's close enough that they should have probably grabbed, snatched that thing up. Because now they just look stupid. <laughs> now it just looks dumb. Uh, Bethesda delays their big Fallout 76 update only to drop a subscription with features that didn't work because, of course, they didn't work because Bethesda. That's right. Yes, some of the some of the complaints that people have had uh, about with uh, with the premium servers uh, is that the let me actually pull up the article here. Whoop. So first off, you get a scrap box, and the scrap box uh, is, is basically where you put your crafting materials, and you can store as many, the uh, video autoplay, and I was like, oh shit, what is that? Uh, you could store basically an infinite number of crafting materials and whatever inside of this scrap box. Well, as it turns out, the scrap box is just flat out deleting stuff, uh, so technically infinite. But I don't know if that was resolved. <laughs> and the private servers were actually just not private. You could join, I guess anybody could join your instance. Uh, and also people were, were getting into their worlds and they're finding out that there was places that mobs that were killed and uh, loot that was already looted. And so it was just like, well, it was just like, maybe it's not private at all. And, and even so, 
the the private servers, which people will talk about, God, that'd be great. We could private servers. You could have like maybe a community, like the BFF community, right? We could have a private server. We could have you know however many people, like whatever the max that you're supposed to have on a Fallout 76 server. We could have that many people playing at any given time. We could build a cool like you know city or whatever, or you know shanty town, and it would have been fucking great. Well, you could only have seven other people, and it's peer to peer, so that means that the person who is hosting has to have a Fallout first subscription. And if that person goes offline, if there's nobody else that has a Fallout First subscription, then they all get kicked. Otherwise, it would just transfer to the next person over who has a Fallout 76 uh, uh, subscription. I'm going to keep on mixing those up, okay? Because I'm on prescriptions. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's going about about on par. Oh, I said $9.99 a month. Sorry, it's $12.99 a month or $99.99 a year. So I, I messed that up a little bit. Um, wait, what? What? So yes, yeah, so the maximum people you have on a secret server, on a secret server, on a private server is uh is eight people, including yourself. The servers aren't they're not dedicated. They're peer-to-peer, yeah, they're peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh that's what that's my my understanding is that they're peer-to-peer, -peer, which is the reason why they only support up to eight. Up to eight people. It's not like a you don't fire up like a standalone instance or anything like that, uh, that continues to run. It's kind of like Warframe, where you uh, uh where you have the host migration that happens. But what's going to happen is pretty much it's going to just drop. <laughs> like, you're going to have issues. I'm going to get to this point, Bethesda had a Y2K bug and they just never recovered uh, from. And this is the end result of 20 years later. It took them 20 years to finally fall apart. Yeah, they're just not... <sighs> it's just nothing but problems. And people are actually liking it to, liking it to the, the Metal Gear... Um, the Metal Gear subscription service that they had for a minute. Metal Gear Survive, here it is, thank you. Uh, thank you, me, who dragged the link over there. All right. Um... People are, are comparing it to that, which that was a huge joke, and that didn't really go anywhere. Um, people, uh, uh, people, are, actually, this is the best part. The best part is when you get a Fallout First subscription, uh, you get a, a fancy little icon that shows up over your, and it just kind of shows up, right? The problem is that people are, why, why, did, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this layout? Oh, I'm zoomed in. Okay. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, people are, oh, they do, did absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this layout? PC Gamer? Am I in the wrong? I'm in the wrong thing. All right, anyways, so we're just going to deal with this like, just super tiny text, I guess. Uh, so people are actually committing, I guess, class warfare. So if somebody sees you running around with a Fallout First icon over your head, they're going to kill you. It's just all bad. It's just all bad. There's just, yeah, it's just, there's just nothing, nothing positive coming out of this thing. And it just... It just, yeah, it's just, just terrible. Uh, and Bethesda is just gonna shrug it off. You know, what? let me go back to the actual notice here. This is the, the act. This is the actual. This is not FalloutFirst.com. This is their actual Fallout First uh, announcement here. This is where they go through and they show you their private world, scrap box, survival tent, uh, atoms. You get basically you get an allowance. Uh, you get special armor and you get icons and emo packs, right? So you get some things that come with this. Um, and then if we scroll on to the bottom. It says, as with everything we do for Fallout 76, we will continue to listen to feedback and improve the service over the months and years to come. So please keep sending it in. It just feels so empty. It just feels so empty. Like, really? Are you really gonna are you really gonna do it? This is this is not looking well for the next installment of uh, Elder Scrolls, I feel like. I feel and I, and a lot of people are looking at this as like like, okay, what can we expect from anything that comes out of Bethesda going forward like it everything that they've done so far has just looked like it's a a cash grab of some sort and the community the community is pretty for the most part I feel like majority of the community has turned their backs to them because they don't expect them to ever recover from it it's like they're pretty I guess they're joining the ranks of uh of Bioware um uh I mm, EA what EA was like two years ago. Lately, they've been like lately EA has been like kind of under the radar somehow. Unless you're playing sports games, they've been pretty much run under the radar for the most part because everybody else is fucking up. Everybody else is fucking up. <laughs> so yeah, they can Yeah, they keep on cash grabbing, man. And it just like it just. If you expect nothing, you will never be disappointed. Pilot guys got it. That's that's not that's not a bad idea. Oh man, Active Blizzard, or yeah, yeah, Activision Blizzard is uh, doing a pretty good job of keeping everybody else uh, looking like the good guys, that's for sure. Fallout 76 only sold 1.3 million copies in the first month, which is a massive drop-off compared to everyone else. Yeah, that's not, not good numbers. I wonder overall how much they sold. Regardless, 
I actually, you know what? I wonder how many people are, oh, we have no way of actively tracking it, do we? Because, uh, do we have, like, Steam Analytics for, for this? I wonder if we do. Anyways, uh, I do wonder how many people are actually playing this game, like, right now. Like, what their latest peak players, uh, is. Actually, not, yeah, not on Steam, so we wouldn't be able to get any kind of tracking or anything like that. Man, too bad Cross X-Fire is no longer a thing. Uh, boss 76, hey! <laughs> it's probably, actually. Uh... You wouldn't compare Fallout 76 and Effect? Oh yeah, I would. I would compare Fallout 76 15 to to or uh, 14 to uh, to this at all. I mean, unless they bomb, they'll nuke the whole place and then reset everything. Seeing all this happen with Blizzard, Bioware, Bethesda has made me worried about Larian gaining more popularity. I'm afraid, and one day they end up like these guys. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what is this saying, right? You uh, you you either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself uh, to see yourself become the villain, or something along those lines. And that is, I mean, that, that feels like that's true, you know, and we're going to talk about Mixer in a little bit and, you know, people might, might be like flocking to Mixer, but Mixer's eventually going to have to, you know, go through some of the same changes. Like there, there are certain things, I mean, granted they have all of the, uh, all of the data that they've observed from Twitch and the mistakes that Twitch has made and also the, 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 the praises that Twitch has gotten for some of the features they've rolled out. Um, but still you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, Fallout 74, sorry, 76 is, uh, uh, well, if you, if you want to go check out their premium service, you can. Falloutfirst.com. Uh, Fallout 76 has 291 viewers on Twitch. How many do they have on Mixer? Let's go find out. Let's see, Mixer.com. I'm curious. Let me see. Uh, Brown Games. Search Games. Fallout. I'm always afraid of Pull this in on the screen. Fallout, Shelter, Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout 4, Fallout 76. There's 52 people! 52 people streaming this. Look at that. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Oh, he's got like a little... What? what? Is that like his thing? Is that like his little... This is, this is, yeah, this is, no, this is how I, uh... That one, right? You sure did. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, this is your top streamer right now on, uh, on Mixer. That's streaming Fallout 76. And, uh, I mean, it's not much better on Twitch. So, you could pretty much draw any kind of conclusions you want from that. A lot of times, Twitch numbers, or streaming numbers, are, are, are pretty good. Uh, a pretty good, you know, just just a, a reading on like, you know, how how a game is performing. If like nobody's watching it, then probably nobody's playing it. And so I don't know what Bethesda is trying to get uh, out of whoever for with this ninety nine dollars a year service. But I don't really feel like I don't really feel like it's worth the amount of uh, uh of of controversy they're creating by just by doing it. Obviously, they had a cost analysis, like a you know risk analysis on like, okay, cool. So what is the uh, what is the cost and what is what is the profits? Like, what can we get from this? Like, okay, it's gonna cost us, you know, our uh, our all of our goodwill with the majority of of players, but we might be able to make a little bit of money off of it. Oh, don't worry. If we lose, if we lose, if we lose some, you know, some player, they'll come back for Skyrim. That's what they're thinking, or the next, you know, installment. That's what they're thinking. They're thinking that. In the next installment of whatever they release, they think that gamers are going to forget. And you know what? For the most part, they're probably right. But I do feel like gamers are, in general, are, are actually starting to be a little bit more informed and actually, you know, taking steps towards, uh, you know, abiding by those, uh, those boycotts, whatever it is. You know, people are saying, I'm never going to buy another, another Bethesda game again. And I feel like some of those people might actually do it. They're not just talking shit. If 100 people bought it, they made a 10K in a flash. Yes, but 10K isn't shit, right? Like, they put way more than $10,000 worth of man hours and everything into the game, into, into uh, the premium service, I'm sure, with, like, testing it or, you know, maybe not. Maybe they didn't test into anything. They just fucking made that shit up. <laughs> they just made that shit up and just trying to make money off of it. But that's, oh, man. I know, I know. I said testing, and it, immediately I was just like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, maybe not. Maybe they didn't. Uh, I know, I know, I know. That's the drugs talking. I'm sorry. That's the, uh, yeah, the, the muscle relaxers just letting words fall out of my mouth without thinking about it ahead of time. So, oh, man. Speaking of Mixer, 
Speaking of Mixer, I didn't actually watch this. I kind of want to see this. Hey, Mike. Yeah. What should you do? I'm making moves. Benji misses you. Oh, hi, Benji. <laughs> it's 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 cringy, yes. But honestly, I think it's kind of funny at the same time. Like, I think this is pretty well done. I think it's it was I think it was better than the 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 ninja one, uh, for sure. So, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna leave that running in the background here. Uh, so. Trout is. <laughs> I, I think I think it was a very self-aware promotional video. I, I think it was great. Um, but yeah, Trout is leaving, or he has left Twitch, and he is now working uh, at Mixer. Uh, you have those lights in your house, don't you? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I'm already set. Totally, I can make my own promotional video. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, I really can. I do. I have lights. I have lights just like this shit, and they're already set up and everything. Hmm. I should make like a fake, like a fake one. Oh my god. Oh um, and I have a cat. Oh my god. Anyway, so <laughs> and I have a wife. I got all the things. Oh god. <laughs> Play that. <laughs> anyway, so Trout is leaving or has left to go to Mixer. Um, he did he did uh kick off his uh his stream with I had it written down here. Uh, I, I, when I tuned in, he was at 50,000 viewers and he was actually getting everything set up and some things were messed up and he was apologizing and everything. Listen, Shroud is a good guy, right? Like, I don't feel like Shroud... I don't feel like Shroud is, is, is any kind of... There's no toxicity with him. I think he just kind of takes everything in stride. Uh, and so, like, I, I'm not going to fault him for anything that he wants to do. I'm not going to make fun of him for anything. I think that he's... he's yeah, he's nice. I think he's a nice guy. You know what? Good luck to him going to Mixer. Uh, as long as they still get highlights of him just doing obscene shit, I'm totally cool. Granted, there's no clip feature, I guess, on Mixer, but uh, but still. Uh, isn't that how you psych yourself up before you stream? Every time. Oh, every time, dude. Every time. Except for... <laughs> except I use this. I don't have all... I don't have, like... <laughs> actually, no, I do... Never mind, I'm lying. I do have all this stuff. I have the fog machine. I have the lights. Fuck, man. I'm totally gonna do this. Uh, does it matter to anyone really? I mean, your favorite streamers go to Mixer. Does it mess up? Does it mess his audience? Oh, 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 God. Uh, wow, where'd it go? Does, oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry, Price Cut. Yeah. <laughs> Drugs. Uh, does, does it mess up his audience up to go there instead? So that's, so that's the, that's the thing that people are talking about is, does it, I think there's too much movement here. Let me go ahead and, uh, we'll just stop it right, boop, 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 boop. Come on. No, uh, uh, uh-oh, I broke it. Bam, there we go. We'll leave right there. Uh, so, sorry, there's too much moving in my face here. Um, I'm not high, okay? In case anybody wasn't paying attention before the stream, or if you watch this on YouTube, I'm on muscle relaxes right now, okay? So things are a little bit foggy. Just a little bit, alright? Because I'm old, apparently. So, anyways, fuck you, guns. Um, so, does it bother anybody to go and uh, go to Mixer versus staying on Twitch? You know, some people, yeah, some people are comfortable just staying on Twitch. And others, like, you, maybe they don't have an app that supports a Mixer app, uh, streaming app, on whatever device they watch streams on. And they don't want to open it up in a browser because maybe the browser has a certain limitation that they can't do. Like, for example, they can't play it uh, while it's minimized or something. I don't know. Like, everybody has their own reason why they don't want to switch to Twitch or to Mixer for whatever reason as a viewer, right? Um... But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't watch Mixer because I don't really follow anybody that is on there. So there's no, no real reason for me to move over there. I would say, like, if uh, Jovian, the DJ, if he moved over there, I might have that tab open from, what, from time to time. Because I have his tab open from time to time on weekends, uh, just playing music. So maybe that'll be a thing. Or maybe I'll just find another person DJing. Honestly, there's nobody as good as him, so I probably won't. Uh, but, you know, for some people... The, the folks that have moved over, like Shroud or like, uh, you know, like Ninja, these are just people that they enjoyed because they were just, you know, good at the game and they had good personality presence and whatever. Well, with those people gone, that's actually beneficial to other people uh, on the platform because then they can just move over to those folks. Uh, remember when, um, when Ninja left, 
and suddenly everybody was streaming uh, uh was streaming Fortnite. Like ev everybody jumped on the Fortnite train. It was almost like they were trying to scoop them up. They're just like, it was like hungry, hungry hippos, man. Like all those fucking balls all over the place. They were like, oh shit. There's everyone scrambling to get a piece of that. So, so yeah, so Mixer is, uh, is, is doing their best to buy their way into the market, which sounds really familiar. And a lot of people compare it to uh, Epic Game Store. But I don't, I, and I've had, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, I'm, I'm kind of torn on it because uh, at first it's like, yeah, you know, it does kind of sound like they're doing what, what Epic Game Store is doing. They're just buying their way into the market. But, Whenever, if somebody switches from Twitch to Mixer, it's kind of like your favorite show going from like ABC to NBC, right? You still have the same delivery method, like it just, you basically change the channel, right? And that's what people are telling other folks who are bitching about, you know, oh, what's so hard about typing Mixer.com, right? That's what people are saying. Uh, but when you compare it to Steam to Epic Game Store, it's like going from Google Chrome to Netscape Navigator. It's just not like the features just aren't there the support just isn't there yet uh maybe one day epic game star will step it up and they'll have all that but um it's like going from abc to netflix no well i mean i guess you could say that yeah you could say it's like going abc to, you still if you still access it the same way maybe but for me it's just like changing a channel uh i don't even type twitch.tv i have a i have a following page bookmarked there you go you think your opinion is well worth what is this um what does Twitch actually do that Mixer doesn't? Well, there's actually a, there, there is a slew of, uh, of features that Twitch has that Mixer does not have yet. But Mixer does have a lot of the basic stuff for supporting streamer in play right now. YouTube, however, still manages to be like one of the best streaming platforms that nobody wants to use because they have the ability to rewind. So if you show up to a stream late, you could just go back. You could just go back and just watch something. Oh, yeah, you know, I just missed that. I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. Maybe one day everybody else will catch up. Uh, Mixer also has that faster than light, low band, like low, uh, uh, low ping, whatever response thing. So people can. So basically you type something and the streamer sees it immediately. And so you can have a more real time conversation. Because like right now, I think we're probably sitting at like three or four seconds. Those three or four seconds really do make a difference. Uh, you know, if you could, if you bring it down to like, you know, under a second, it's crazy. Uh, you need an amazing internet to use FTL, but it's awesome. Yeah, on Twitch, you need to go to videos page to rewind a live stream. Yeah, that's right. You need a video page. Uh, and it creates terrible artifacting. Woo! Faster than light. It's actually just like, psh, huh. Imagine the, the, the backseat. Oh, I know. Real time backseating. Real time. It's <laughs> it's price good for four seconds ago. That's why I feel, I feel like that right now. It's like, who are you again? With my fucking brains gone. Uh, so he's not the only one. Shroud is not the only one that actually left uh, over this weekend. Uh, some of you guys might know King Gathalion. Gathalion. Uh, he just announced that he is going to uh, going over to Mixer as well. So there are there are a number. Of, who I know. Who who I never heard of this guy. Who. It's funny because a lot of people say that to be sarcastic, but I understand that some of you guys probably have no idea who he is. I'll be honest, I had no idea who he was when uh, somebody else retweeted it. I was like, I don't know who the fuck this is, but I'm not going to say it because I look like a dick. Um, so I, instead, instead of saying who, I just looked it up. Anyways, so, <laughs> so he's going to, uh, uh, so he's also going, and he's got a pretty good presence. Uh, 322,000 followers. This is how I rated him. Again, I don't know who he is. Or what he does with the community or whatever. Uh, but when I see 322,000 followers, it to me it's like, okay, yeah, he's got he's got some presence. He's got a good enough presence that him moving is a pretty big deal. And I actually wonder, uh, we don't know now. We don't know who. Uh, so he's saying he runs Guardian Con. This is a convention I don't know anything about. So uh, wait a minute. Okay, okay, it's just it's just okay. I thought it was, I thought it was more than just, when I see Guardian Con, I was like, wait, is this like a Destiny convention? <laughs> this is like, really, what the fuck? Uh, so, anyways, he's moving over as well. If you haven't heard of him, apparently you haven't heard of Google either. Uh, so, yes, people are leaving uh, Twitch to go to Mixer, and I'm under the impression that he was, that he's getting paid to move over. It, obviously, Shroud is getting paid to move over. Ninja got paid to move over. I'm fairly certain that uh, that you know some of these big time streamers, people that have influence, are getting paid to move over to uh, to Mixer. 
But like we said before, uh oh, was that my bell? Hold on. Uh, as as we we talked about this before, and okay, cool. She's got keys. Uh, my wife came home early because she wants to make sure I don't pass out. I told her I was like, I'm I'm on stream. It's totally cool. Chat will take care of me if I pass out. It's fine. Um. Anyways, so as we mentioned, we talked about this before when Ninja moved over, where once once the ball gets rolling and like people like there's like a snowball effect right like once a couple people start moving over then other folks who are maybe looking at twitch is like you know what i've been busting my ass trying to make it on twitch for like years and i'm not growing and you know, maybe they think that they're doing everything they possibly can in order to grow on twitch and it's just not having an impact because it's just so saturated twitch twitch really is a very very saturated market there's so, so fucking many streamers. So if you're getting started on Twitch, that's going to be very difficult because you have to somehow make yourself stand out, not just in content, because you might be doing that, but you also have to somehow manage to get the eyeballs on your content to begin with, which is super fucking hard when, you, when you're like at the very bottom of the list. So what I'm seeing, just in the BFF community, we have a room where people can post their links to uh, when, when they go live, they stream. Which I think is great because it's easy to go through. It's like, oh, I need to run something back on boop. Um, but I'm noticing that a lot of people are starting to start and starting to stream over on uh, on Mixer. And good for them. It's a trend that I feel like we're going to see even more of. More people, the more big names that uh that that you know Mixer brings over, which I think like the next one's probably gonna be a Dr. Disrespect or something. Uh, but the more big names that Mixer brings over the more of their followers or the more not even necessarily their followers but the more people are going to think you know what maybe i should go over there and give that side a shot because they have nothing to lose i mean shit i've considered it i've totally considered it it's like what well, but the thing is it's a gamble because the second i start streaming over there i could potentially lose my partnership over here twitch pretty much has us on a on a short leash when it comes to that kind of stuff and so that's fucking dangerous I think I think it says uh, in the affiliate one that you can't stream to both simultaneously. I don't know what the part the partner agreement used to say that you couldn't stream to anything else. Period. Uh, but I don't know if that was something that they had updated. So, so yeah, it's 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 a gamble, man. Like you know, if, if you see something else you want to go and try, affiliates on a much longer yeah much longer leash. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, you can't even really try without necessarily gambling your 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 life away. <laughs> <laughs> really you can you know if i if, if i mean yeah if i if i moved over i would have to make mixer work because i would lose twitch and that'd be it um i don't have a partnership but someone just starting out jumping into mixer now might might not might uh, not be a bad idea yeah exactly this is this is the time this is and I mean, this is what people are recognizing i think is that this is the time to get into mixer because mixer is a small community right now uh they you know they're they are growing Granted, after the acquisition, we'll call it acquisition, sure, of Ninja, they didn't actually see any growth. They brought over Ninja thinking, I guess, you know, maybe they thought that they were going to have, you know, a, a, a good amount of growth in overall viewership, but apparently those numbers didn't really pan out. Um, so what do you do? Grab more people, convince more people, snipe more people and bring them over. This is this same shit happens in, in tech. Like seriously, you 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 know somebody that works for another company that's a really good developer or something, you fucking snipe them. You you you, you when I worked for the 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 the, the phone sex and uh, and uh, psychic place, the psychics and the phone sex part like split up, right? And they made like two different companies. Um, and these guys, the phone sex guys, whoop, they kind of they took off, they did their own thing. But because you know we were all like working together at one point in time, they already knew who was good on this side. And so what started happening was. Oh, so and so is leaving to go to go work somewhere else. Where are they going? Well, they don't want to say. Oh shit, they're going over here to this place. Oh, someone else is leaving. They're going to oh, where are they go oh, this place. We're fucking just sniping dudes over and over again. And this is the same shit that they're doing here. It's just very public. <laughs> it's just very very public. Having us recently, someone poach one of our work. It sucks. It sucks. It really sucks when it's like when it's you. Because I was a manager of my department, right? And so for me, it was like I was losing people left and right. And it was just like, yeah, damn it. It's like, come on, man. Uh, good phone sex is hard to find. That's right. You got to find someone that's really committed to it. You guys, they had to really, really be committed to it. Uh, instead of watching and playing like with Twitch, uh, you get to pick, watch, or play. What? Um, why well, had sniped Mike from there? Yeah, I mean, kind of. Like, well, 
I actually ended up working both. Uh, Burger blew everything with that. Uh, but yes, so Ninja didn't bring the viewers. They, I mean, they brought, he brought viewers. He's at 8,000 right now on his stream, uh, if he's still streaming right now. Uh, he's at about 8,000, which is less than what he was getting over on Twitch. But the more people you bring over, I mean, now it's Ninja and Shroud. So, and, and, and Gathalion, but I don't feel like Gathalion really, like, plays the same games. I don't know if he does. Plays the same games as Ninja Shroud. Um, but, you know, the more big names they pull over, the more folks that they'll be able to, uh, uh, to get, to be part of the community and stay there. We'll see. Uh, is it 11.7k? Is that where he's at right now? I checked, like, a couple hours ago, so I wasn't sure if he had just started, if he was just getting off. Uh, or if he was just getting off. Um... Goth plays Destiny for the most part. Oh, okay. So he didn't have any viewers on Twitch to begin with. <laughs> or he was the one person who got, who got fucking viewers playing Destiny. So maybe it was a good idea for him to move over. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Destiny, Destiny is fucking, that's like stream cancer, man. You might as well just, just delete your fucking Twitch account if you want to be a, a, a Destiny streamer. You feel personally attacked? I'm just, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. It's just, it's just... It's risky. It's risky. Uh, in other news, speaking of EA, we talked about this a little bit just a little while ago. Let me go ahead and uh, fix this zoom here. So EA is uh, is teasing that they're going to be coming to Steam. Now, we only drew this conclusion because of the, the little leaks that they've been throwing out with the videos and everything. But also, somebody went digging through the files and they found... Uh, they, they found elements that are very similar to how Steam handles Ubisoft, or Uplay uh, integration. You know, basically you click play on like Trials, for example, and then Uplay pops up. Well, they, they're finding those same, those same types of files or the same types of references, uh, but for Origin. So it looks like we might actually get EA or Origin to be integrated into Steam, which... For people <clears throat> playing Titanfall 2, this is a huge thing. <laughs> like, this, is, this could potentially like completely revitalize that game and get people... like act I fucking loved playing Titan F Titanfall 2 multiplayer. That shit is fucking fun. Uh, but we only have ourselves to play with, and the number of people that are playing all the... You know, just playing Pugs or whatever, uh, is, uh, is probably not as... Not even nowhere, cl nowhere near close as what it could be if it was on, on Steam. Um, now, that's just one example. Yo, Kimmy says, uh, uh, please debut on Steam with classic Need for Speed games. I could dream. Yeah, yeah. There's, there are so many games that are just not on Steam that I think a lot of us would really appreciate if they were, right? Um, hey, happy birthday, Skittles. Alert's turned off, but I'll go give you that. Happy birthday, thank you. Um, it's needed. Steam is the largest storefront by far. Not putting your game there without payout from Epic can be suicide. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can either have exposure or you could have money. And then just die later, which is, that's like 2A. So those two are like together. Uh, <laughs> so, so it makes sense. It makes sense uh, for them to move over. Uh, classic Need for Speed Subnight. That sounds great. We've already done Forza. Everyone loves racing games, right? Yeah, totally. <clears throat> you still need Origin to launch the games, right? Yeah, so it'll be like you play where you click and it'll open up the launcher, but then it'll open up the game as well. It's not like you play's integration is not that bad. And so if Origin brings that same level of integration where it's like, yeah, it pops up on a, bra uh, you know, a launcher, but then it launches the game. It's like, oh, okay, it's fine. You know? Uh, before Steam has a Game Pass, dude. That's, that's, uh, that's Steam's, like, if they ever played that card and found a way to make it profitable, that would just be it right there. Uh, it means I give EA 30% less money, though, which I like. <laughs> well, we don't know what kind of deal they struck up with EA. It's very possible that they have a better deal uh, in that regard. But I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe Steam was, maybe Steam was kind of like, hey, listen, man, you you want this level, you you want this exposure, you want these numbers, you gotta pay that 30%. Uh, could this be from a possible GOG integration? I don't know, actually. Uh, you play file searching sucks balls though if the game isn't on the same drive as a launcher. Loading times are insane. Oh really? I didn't know that. Did not know that. I don't really play any like intensive games on uh on Origin. I think the last like real I think Titanfall 2 is actually the 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 last game. Most of trials, yeah. Most of trials. Oh no, I'm thinking of Origin. You play, you play. No wait, your origin. I don't know, whatever. Uh <laughs> 
Uh, Xbox Games Pass has been awesome to own. Just saw the Outer Worlds release was a big ol' fuck yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, having- oh, Apex! That's right, I totally forgot about Apex. Like everybody else. Um, but yeah, uh, the Outer Worlds being on Game Pass is just amazing. And then you just have to- there, I have a little, uh, little applet that I downloaded from some GitHub shit. Uh, so I probably like a virus or a keylogger on my shit, but, 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 the nice thing is that it actually installs, uh, it's all Outer, Outer Worlds to my, uh, uh, to my Steam list, so I can actually launch it from here, and you're probably wondering why, why would you do that, why don't you just, like, open it up in, uh, in your Xbox, you know, launcher or whatever, is because, with this, I can now play it through Steam Link, and that's what I want, it doesn't track time or anything like that, but with this, I could play it through Steam, it's a bit, it's a bit rigged, like, I can't play with the controller directly. I have to actually run an extension cord with a USB, uh, with a USB Bluetooth dongle at the very end of it, going down the hall and hanging over the banister so I can play with the controller in the front room. But it works. Hi, babe. I'm still awake. Thank, thank you for coming home and checking on me. Huh? I feel good. I feel good. A little woozy, but I'm good. <laughs> Jerry rigged. Yes, very rigged. Very, very rigged. Uh, but it works, but it works. Oh, I'll show you guys that. Let's see. So, um, Chad says hi. She says hi. Uh, <laughs> so, so yes, we might see Origin come to Steam. And I think that'd be great. A ton of games, maybe. We don't even know what the deal is, you know? Like, we have no idea. Uh, am I the only person still with the old Steam layout? You have the old Steam layout? How'd you do that? Huh. Mine is updated, it has worked. I don't know. Uh, it's not, you know, the, honestly, the new layout's actually pretty good. I, I, I really feel like they made a ton of improvements on it. It's maybe not as compact. Like, it's, it's definitely, like, everything's bigger, and there's, like, icons all over the place, but I feel like the information they display is actually pretty handy. Uh, <clears throat> you can play local co-op games remotely. Uh, yes, I didn't know that. It's actually in the news. Why you gotta jump ahead? Yes, you can play. Might as well go ahead and transition there. Hey, good transition. Top every day. So, yes, let me grab that link. Steam has launched a couch co-op Online. Online couch co-op. It's exactly, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're able to play with a friend on a, uh, uh, a local co-op, or local, uh, multiplayer game only. So, this is a pretty big deal. And it, it may not, may, if for some reason it doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal to you, let me go and pull up the list of games that this supports here. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I can move that over there. It's awesome, minor delay, but I don't have to, I don't have like super fiber internet. Good, yeah, I'm wondering what the delay is, I haven't tried it yet. So there are, uh, let's see, this is multiplayer, local co-op, I don't know if I actually have this set up right. But just in this section right now, there's 857 titles that support it. Now, I should note that the developers put the, um, they put the tags in, so it's not a perfect, like, one-to-one. -one. Uh, let's see, if I could just do like this, local co-op, there's 1810 results. Uh, but there are some games that I found games in this list that were not even multiplayer and they had local co-op in there So I think that maybe you know developers just don't know what the fuck they're doing sometimes it is like click all the buttons or something um Nvidia did they did uh Announce a feature for that being able to share like hand the controller off a uh, PlayStation online actually did the same thing uh, Where they talked about being able to hand off the controller. I don't know anybody that's actually tried that or even if it is launched, but the Steam one was was announced and launched pretty much within like what a, a couple weeks or something. Um, and so here it is. I have not had an opportunity to try it. Uh, top every day said he's tried it, right? Um, no, who's tried it? Oh uh, yeah, Top every day says he tried it last weekend. It's awesome with minor minor delay, uh, and he said he doesn't have an awesome internet. So uh, what do you say? It's great for strat games. Yeah, I, I mean, just look through your your Steam list and just look for games. I mean, I've covered a billion local co-op only uh, uh, indie games like through my history of doing any for breakfast and 15 mog and BFF report and all that shit and now all those games should be playable with your friends over uh, over Steam. I think that's fucking awesome. I think that's really really awesome and yeah maybe maybe a game like Towerfall won't really work too well because in Towerfall it's such a like you need to have the lowest fucking possible ping so you don't get hit by a stupid fucking arrow um but otherwise, yeah, I think uh, most other games, any kind of stra strategy games, which was uh, mentioned, uh, tabletop, but uh, tabletop uh, similarity has it. Uh, see, I try to buy a local co-op game. So much fun when you 
Couch up with the buddies come over. You know, it's funny. I always think that too. I always think, oh man, I'm gonna have this awesome list of games we could play whenever I have friends come over. And then my friends come over and we just end up watching YouTube all fucking night. So I don't know what I'm doing, man. Yeah, or the, or the buddies they have. Then the buddies don't come over and we don't play. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly it right there. So, so yes, uh, local co-op is available. I highly recommend somebody go out and try it. Let me know how it works. Those of you guys who have friends. Uh, but no, actually, I do want to try it myself with uh, you guys in the BFF community. See how many people we could get going on, at one time on a game that maybe only supports local co-op. Like, uh, does Full Metal uh, Furies, is that online co-op? I will have to look at it later. Um, you have to feed them and clean your house. Sounds great. Exactly. We always just end up playing Cards Against Humanity and drinking, right? Exactly. Friend DLC not included. Aw. Yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> uh, going back to Twitch, Twitch had a bit of an incident earlier this week. We always like to mention uh, Twitch's uh, um, moderator mishaps because their moderation team, as I mentioned before, it feels like there's no oversight. Like it's kind of like everybody just kind of makes up the rules or interprets the rules differently. And there's nobody there to kind of to look at things and say, hey, you know what? Maybe we should enforce this a specific way across the board. It doesn't feel that way. Um, even, even with, uh, 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 Emmett Shear going on at TwitchCon and discussing, sorry, I realize that my, my fan is blowing into the microphone, let me back it up a little bit, uh, discussing it and saying that, you know, intent matters, context matters, it felt like that was just like, <laughs> like, that didn't really, really have any kind of staying power, because, fast forward to, uh, just about a week ago, and, uh, gentleman, gentleman by the name of Formal got banned from Twitch, now, Twitch Band is a Twitch account that actively monitors like tons and tons and tons of uh, of partners. And so the second they be they're banned, it will tweet saying so and so was banned. And when they're reinstated, it will tweet again saying so and so is unbanned. So it's kind of a cool Twitter account if you want to keep you know keep up the date on the latest drama. And so this one popped up, and I saw in my in my tweet deck feed, I saw that it already had like a shitload of comments, and. <laughs> I opened it up and <laughs> apparently this is how Formal actually found out that he was banned. He, <laughs> he gets, he's like, what? And so he looked at, he, I guess he discussed this over with everybody or with uh, people at, uh, uh, at, at Twitch. And just so you know, like this is another example of somebody who's not, this is not like small, small change. Like he's got 850,000 followers. Uh, and so this is not like me getting banned right where it's like yeah me and my little angry community is gonna be super mad about this uh and the reason why was because he had uh he had voice he had voice on while playing a game and somebody else made a uh uh you know said something uh derogatory uh I, i'm not sure I, I think it was the f word uh in reference to somebody who's homosexual uh and not fuck <laughs> that's what i should say the f word not fuck um and I guess somebody listened to it and and assumed that it was him that made the comment and then banned him for seven days. But he has since got it reinstated. This is after a review, I guess. That they, but it since has been reinstated and he uh, actually says right here, he says, uh, I got suspended over something somebody else said while I was playing with them. I'm currently trying to get it handled. It wasn't even like a sub or anything like that. It was apparently just like a rando. So if you have... I mean, I remember when we first started playing PUBG, when PUBG first uh, came out, and I remember we were like sitting in, like in the, in the, in the uh, on the plane, and you had just everybody talking, and you would just hear the most absurd and racist and whatever shit people were just saying shit, trying to get a rise out of folks, trying to get attention. It happened all the time. I never, th I never thought then, oh shit, maybe I should like mute that because I could get in trouble. Because of something somebody else said. I didn't think that at the time. But now I have to actually pay attention to that kind of shit. The plane, yeah. The plane, the, the PUBG plane was just the fucking worst. Uh, VR chat. The, the, the thing is, the rule, I guess, was interpreted that, or sorry, the, the, the review was done where they said, you know, they thought that it was him that had made the comments, and he wasn't. And so, instead of, I mean, if you look at somebody that has 850,000 fucking followers on Twitter, which I'm guessing that his Twitch page probably has a significant amount of viewers as well, followers or something, there has to be a threshold where you review that shit. If it's somebody that has a concurrent of one to like 10 people watching, 
uh, versus somebody, or or they have you know some certain threshold of uh, under a certain threshold of followers, then yeah, maybe you know they're a band. And if they want to appeal on like you know Reddit or something like that, and it rises to the top, and it's like okay, maybe we'll look at it again. Because I'm sure they ban. I mean, you can if you follow the Twitch ban account. There's bans happening all the fucking time. Let me actually go and pull this up here. The threshold should be, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, you're right. The threshold should be partnership in general. But I mean, like, let's look at this here. Uh, one hour ago, two hour ago, two hours ago, three hours ago, three, five hours ago. Some of these are banned, some of them are unbanned, uh, six hours ago. But these are all actions that are being taken place, or that are taking place on banned accounts, whether it's being banned or unbanned. And you can see there's so fucking many that are happening you know, uh, every single day, like it was what, like maybe, uh, maybe between like five and 10 that are happening to partners. These are just partners, not affiliates. As far as I know, they're not affiliates. Uh, actually, I'll say it right at the top here. Whoop. Uh, we are not affiliate. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, oh, what does it say? Actually somewhere, somewhere else I read that they were, uh, monitoring. It did say that they were monitoring X number of people. Oh, here it is right there. Uh, right there underneath. Uh, so yeah, they're only, they're only monitoring, uh, partners. So who knows how many, how many unpartnered people are getting banned on a day-to-day -day basis. But yes, you're right, Kimmy. You know what? Just looking at the data that we're given here, he's monitoring 35,000 uh, partners. We don't know how many more partners there are versus this. I can't remember the number they said at TwitchCon. Um, but if there's only like five to 10 actionable items per day on partners, I don't feel like that's I don't feel like that's too many things to escalate if it's a partnered account, right? It should, yeah. So yeah, you're right. It should be partnerships in general should get uh, reviewed. But, you know, sometimes they review the shit and they're just like, yeah. It happened actually, uh, I don't remember with what, but somebody reviewed something. Was it TFU? I can't remember. So there was a controversy earlier this year where even after review, they ended up keeping them banned when it was very clearly not a bannable offense that was happening with the person that they, that was, uh, um, that was, that was with the partnered account camera, what it was. But, uh, anyway, so, uh, what does partner mean for, to us normies? Well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Reviews by the same random people that, that can't seem to get anything right the first time. I know, I know, I know, right? It's like, if there's already so many people that are making these, uh, uh that are making these mistakes and banning people who don't deserve to be banned, um, then why do we keep handing it off to each other? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. The blind leading the blind, right? That's basically what it is. So, anyway, so formal is has been reinstated. He did actually uh, post an update saying that he was able to get everything cleared up. He says we're back. Turns out there was some confusion about whether I was the one that said the hateful things or not. I got it cleared up. You guys know I never condone anything like that. See you tomorrow on stream. There is a clip that apparently was taken right after the incident because if you clipped the actual incident itself that that would get the clip removed or something, I don't know. But the clip shows that this person was just talking and just saying shit and just like spouting out random stuff. Nothing particularly hateful or anything in the 30 second clip that they had grabbed. But at the end of the clip, that guy, the formal actually said, wow, that guy is so toxic. So I don't know what the fuck else they wanted, man. And, or, or, and also like, if he said, which he did say that, if that was the clip that was in question, why didn't they look at that and say, oh, maybe it wasn't him that, say, that, that said those things. It's not like he would say these, you know, these hateful words or whatever the fuck he, you know, he said or was they thought he said. And then later be like, wow, that guy was so toxic. Talk about himself in a third person. That's just fucking weird. I don't know. Um, I think they don't have enough people to moderate how many people are streaming. I mean, like I said, we, we have this sample size of just showing that of the 35,000 partners that uh, that Twitch ban follows. They're, uh, they're only doing like, you know, I will just say an average of like seven actionable items a day, whether it's banning somebody or unbanning somebody. To me, that doesn't really seem like, uh, like an insane workload to, to that you would need to have, you know, so many people, uh, that you, that you couldn't, sorry, that you couldn't escalate those, those cases to, for further review. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But, ah, uh, let's see. We do have, let's go talk about BlizzCon shit. Do we have anything else? We might as well get everything else out of the way. Okay, no, good. Let's go and jump into BlizzCon shit. So first, at Quick, aka Mike Barra, has been, uh, has announced that he is very happy to be joining Blizzard, uh, Blizzard uh, executive, uh, the executive team as the vice president and general manager starting uh, November 4th. He's going to be at BlizzCon as well, as he says here. 
Um, Mike used to work for, oh God, he used to work for Xbox, I believe. And I don't really, I don't really care what he does or what his announcements are, what his pre prior, uh, uh, his prior accolades are so much as what he does with Blizzard going forward, uh, with former Xbox execs. Thank you so much, uh, Saren. Uh, you know, with every, with all of the scrutiny that Blizzard's under right now, uh, you know, it, it looks like, yo, oh, we have new management now, right? It's kind of like whenever, uh, whenever you, like, you go to Yelp and you find a place that's like one star and then you go there, it's like, under new management, right? And it's like, it's like, we're trying to tell you, it's like, hey, we got new bosses now, so everything's fine. Come on in, give us another shot. Uh, it feels like that. It really does. But usually these kinds of, uh, th these kinds of deals when you're, when you're onboarding a new executive takes a lot longer than the amount of time that has passed since the Blitzchung incident. So as much as you want to say, oh, we're under new management now, and it's probably a response to a knee-jerk reaction to, uh, uh, to the Hong Kong thing, it probably isn't. It's just something that just happens to be happening at the same time. Um, he was corporate vice president of gaming at Microsoft. There you go. We need a new scapegoat in the house. <laughs> JL and Brax like, please get somebody else in here. <sighs> yeah, he doesn't start until the fourth. Yep. Uh, Obviously, the comments are are not. Um, uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> you move to China. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is. Let me see, da, 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 do the damn thing. Yeah, there's a lot. The, people are not gonna let go of this whole uh, of this whole China thing. And with BlizzCon this week happening this fucking week, uh, that's gonna be a. Uh, let's see. Wait, Tina has a bar. So I got another for a bar here. Uh, that's going to be, it's going to be dicey, man. It's going to be dicey. Uh, we have the schedule. We have the schedule right now for what's happening at BlizzCon. Uh, it's got three days on the schedule, but the first day is just over, Overwatch World Cup Finals. Uh, and also, there, people are pointing out that there's not as many Q&As as there used to be, or that they didn't take uh, questions previously. So I want to go ahead and set the record straight. Uh, the way it usually works is they... Uh, for the Q&A session where somebody reads a question or whatever, that's been happening for a while. Jesse Cox did it like in 2014 or something, I believe, uh, where somebody basically reads questions submitted ahead of time. The open mic stuff that we see so often that gets headlines because somebody gets up there and says something stupid, that usually happens at the end of every other keynote or every other announcement or whatever. They'll open the mic up and they'll have people coming, coming up and saying uh, and asking a question or something. Um, that's the part that we're not sure if that's going to happen. If you look on uh, Saturday, Saturday is when the Q&A happens for, wow, we have World of Warcraft Q&A right here, 2.15 to 3 o'clock. Uh, that is just basically straight, like it says, Q&A. And I can't remember the name of the, uh, of those, um, uh, the WoW, like there's a husband-wife duo that make videos, I can't remember their names, but, uh, but they'll be actually hosting this. <clears throat> um, they'll be brave as fuck. Yeah. So I don't, the, the, like I said, usually after every panel towards the end, they say, Hey, you will we'll go ahead and, uh, we'll go ahead and, and have, uh, you know, people come up and ask questions. That's the, that's the part where shit usually runs a ride. So we don't really know if that's going to be a, a, a part of the regular keynotes or they're just going to like get up there. They're just going to do their announcements. They're going to be like, all right, thank you so much. We'll hope to see you guys in Azeroth. And they walk off the stage. So we'll have to just wait and see. Um, what the formatting is going to be. It is now three days, three days before BlizzCon starts, and we still don't know who the closing band is. Now, I mentioned last week, I said, uh, I, I made a comment about how it feels weird that we're this close, but then, as some of you guys pointed out, they do wait until pretty late who, to, to announce who's going to be uh, who's going to be announcing again? I said, well, by Monday, if they have an announcement, I'm gonna be a little bit worried. It is Monday. It is three o'clock. There's still time. By the time people on YouTube see this video, maybe they'll have an announcement who it's going to be. Uh, if it's just e if it's etc, I don't know if Elite Torn uh, Chieftains is going to be um, is going to be a, a, a good crowd draw. Uh, unless, unless you have like Mike Morheim up there, like playing bass, <laughs> like that's, that shit was, that's what made ETC so good is that you talk to these guys or you see them up there, you know, talking about their, whatever their game they're representing, uh, or talking about, 
uh, or as Mike Morheim actually introduced or, or welcome you guys to BlizzCon. And then at the end of, at the end of the show, they actually, you know, they all get together and they play on stage. Like that's what made ETC so magical uh, was that. But in terms of, uh, you know, who's going to be closing, I, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the, um, Jesus Christ, sorry. Ugh. My assumption is that if they announce who the band is, too far ahead of time, that band's going to get just raked over the coals. People are going to, on social media, uh, already with anything Blizzard tweets or any of their affiliates tweet, they're getting shit on in the comments with people posting Hong Kong memes and all that. If a band announced that they're going to be going and performing, uh, then maybe Blizzard doesn't want to necessarily announce that too far ahead of time because that band could say, hey, wow, you know what? I had no idea that this was a thing. But thank you so much, community, for bringing it up. I'm worried, we're just going to pull out. We're not going to close the show. Because uh, like I mentioned last week, no band, no band that Blizzard would book will benefit from BlizzCon more than the shit that they would get for actually performing at BlizzCon. Does that make sense? So like, sure, like ETC, they'll benefit from performing at BlizzCon because they're a, basically a BlizzCon band. But Nickelback, Mm, probably wouldn't benefit too much from going to BlizzCon. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I just looked over and I just saw Nickelback. Uh, thanks, Larry. Thank you, Larry and Zon, for just like feed that right into my fucking brain. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, so any band that is, uh, is, is met with any kind of you know, blowback with like, you know, oh, you support a company that censors, you know, Americans, whatever, they are, uh, well, they're probably gonna pull out. So, so, yeah, uh, body count before, I, I do wonder who's going to be performing. Like, who the fuck is going to actually be performing this? It's got to, I mean, it's, it's got to be somebody big. I mean, they have, they have Metallica, they have Foo Fighters, they have, I mean, they have so many, like, you know, big names, uh, you know, grace this stage. I can't imagine that they're going to just, just do ETC. Like, and that's it. It just doesn't seem, uh, yeah, I don't know. Chinese metal fan. Oh, dude. Now, in terms of, uh, in terms of the predictions on what we could expect at, you said, you said what? You said big food fighters. Not big. What are you talking about, Terrell? Um, I think that's one of the most talented fucking group out there, period. Or did I, or did I say that? Cause the drugs are, they're still in full effect here. Anyways. So predictions, we already know that uh, we don't know. We already have sources that say Overwatch 2 uh, is coming. Uh, we, I think we're all uh, pretty much on board with, their, yeah, Warcraft 3 Reforged. Uh, we already know that um, we're probably going to get some Diablo 4 news or something. <laughs> the National Chinese Youth Choir. Jesus Christ. See, this is the reason why they can't announce the band ahead of time. They can't. Uh, and then there's... I wish I had saved this tweet, actually. Somebody that works in Blizzard Marketing tweeted out earlier today that they, they hate leaks because it gets misinterpreted. And in a case like this, you know, it's like with Overwatch 2, it might not be literally Overwatch 2. People are like, oh my god, they're abandoning Overwatch altogether. It could very well be just an expansion. It's just listed as Overwatch 2.0. Uh, or, as somebody mentioned, Chapter 2. Because, because thanks to, thanks to Fortnite, Kids everywhere knows what a chapter is. They think it's an expansion pack. Uh, so, so yeah, th it's very possible that um, that it's just more Overwatch. What's a book? I know. <laughs> what is a book? <laughs> uh, so yeah, we don't know what they're gonna announce. But a Diablo was a Diablo two reforged or something. I think a remastered is something people are looking forward to. Uh, Overwatch having PVE. Uh, PVE storylines or something or a new map or whatever it is. See, that's why to me when it says one new a, a new map and at least one new hero, that just sounds like it's just more to built on Overwatch. And with as much as Blizzard has been putting on into the Overwatch League, trying so hard to make it a thing, but it's not really catching on. Uh, they're trying so hard to make it a thing. I can't imagine they're going to go into this BlizzCon the same year that they have that they're trying so hard to push Owl, uh, and then say, oh, now we have Overwatch two. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. So yeah, and I do think it's probably going to be a just an expansion on Overwatch, and you know it's going to have some PVE content. It'll have 
you know, the new map and at least one new hero or whatever. A typical concept, people leak stuff that people want uh, to think it sounds legit. Then everyone blows it up like it's official and they get disappointed when it isn't real and shit on the devs. Yeah, kind of like, kind of like Minecraft 2. Let me go pull this up real quick. So Minecraft 2 is trending. Want to know why? Because of this. Got fired from Nintendo. Here's some leaks. There's going to be a direct on November 6th at 5 p.m. Terry releases uh, with the direct. Doom Slayer is coming. To, it's fuck it's, This whole thing reads so, it's so ridiculous. Kid Icarus Uprising 2 for Switch. New Breath of the Wild 2 tra uh, trailer. Minecraft 2 teaser. Switch Pro. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Cyberpunk 2077 announced for Switch Pro. G Grand Theft Auto 6 announced Switch exclusive. I mean... And people, and this shit is trending on fucking Twitter right now. So someone's going to look at this and they're going to think, oh shit, November 6th, this, <laughs> this 4chan fellow, I know he's on, he's on the ball, man. This guy's got the inside, got the inside. So yeah, so you're right. You're right. When, whenever a leak happens, people take it and they run with it like as if it's gospel. And the truth of the matter is like, we don't know for sure. We could assume, we could very strongly assume, fuck is someone from Las Vegas calling me? Get the fuck out of my face. All those numbers blocked, man. Dang. Anyways, so we could assume that uh, we could assume that a couple things are going to happen. Diablo 4, if they don't announce anything Diablo 4 related, that would just be just the dumbest fucking thing possible. Uh, probably more Overwatch content, the PvE content, probably. I, I believe that's probably real, but I don't think it's Overwatch 2 as a standalone. I feel like them announcing Overwatch 2 would pretty much kill Overwatch 1. Uh, <laughs> uh, Diablo 2 remastered, I know a lot of people are looking forward to that, maybe. But Really, really what I'm looking forward to is how, oh, I guess, I guess probably a new WoW expansion as well. I guess some people are looking forward to uh, as well. Those, those folks who play retail, uh, but really what I'm looking forward to is how they handle this. <laughs> so, uh, at, uh, <laughs> At a basketball game, uh, <laughs> this kid totally debates the fucking cameraman. Look at this. It's so good. Let me get it real quick because, yeah, he's like, oh, hey, look. It's like, oh, bitch. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. He's got his own Twitter account now. He's all like, hey, I'm that kid. Like, oh, and I love his face, too. I love his fucking face. He's just like, yeah. I can't grab it. Here he goes, oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the fucking best. So anyway, so this kid manages to uh, uh, to get an <laughs> operator's like, whoa, shit, <laughs> trying to avoid it. Uh, but this is the kind of stuff that I'm wondering, uh, how are they going to combat this shit? It's a fucking shirt. It's just a shirt, right? They're going to have a delay on stream and whatnot, but still, people are going to be there with cameras. Yeah, you can, delay doesn't do shit, man. The delay, delay doesn't mean anything when people are running their own cameras, and people are always running their cameras. Uh, on their phones, right? They're always recording, their, which is so weird to me. Every time I go to a BlizzCon and you're watching the event, people are like, like, I mean, it's like on a concert. I guess I kind of understand because a concert is not always going to be posted after the fact. You go watch the VOD later, right? But BlizzCon does have VODs. So the opening ceremony is going to be available, but people will still film it. So... Yeah, I definitely see them, uh, I, I, I see them having issues with, with trying to keep things like this under wrap. Uh, but yes, there probably will be a delay on the main feed. We don't know how much. I'm sure, honestly, the second the live feed goes live, uh, I'm betting that people are going to figure out what the delay is pretty quickly. All it takes is somebody just walking behind, you know, behind where they're doing the announcements or something in that little booth they always set up and just waving and then watching the feed to see how long it takes. And then someone's going to report back. It'll be on Reddit. It's like, hey, there's, a, there's only a one minute delay. You know, or there's only a five second delay or whatever. They're going to figure it out pretty easily. So we'll see what happens. But, uh, but man, kudos to this kid. Honestly, it's probably this kid's parents that put him up to it. But just, just fucking great. Oh my God. So this is the kind of shit that, uh, that I'm looking forward to at PlizzCon is seeing how they end up dealing with, with protesters. Because they have to, they have to deal with the protesters in a way that doesn't make them look like they're, uh, they're shills for the Chinese government. But at the same time, they have to deal with them somehow. They have to deal with them somehow. Uh, so yeah, uh, last year, even the panels were uh, everywhere on Twitch and nobody seemed to care. Oh, right. Yeah, on YouTube as well. Yeah, pretty much everywhere. 
uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like pretty much everything that happened at BlizzCon on the live feed that had any kind of notoriety, whether it was something that was funny or something that somebody said, like, don't you guys have phones, right? All that shit was spread like wildfire. So there is no, there is no stream delay that's going to correct that problem because people are going to be able to grab the shit from some other source, whether it be their own phone or whatever. It's going to happen. Everyone's got cameras there, man. Whether it's your phone or an actual video camera or whatever. Um, how many Winnie the Pooh shirts will appear? There's going to be all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Or, or, you know what? There might be nothing. There might be absolutely nothing uh, that shows up. We might go and it might be the, 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 the most tamest or maybe the most hushed <laughs> protest you've, you've ever seen. I don't know. I don't know. But it's exciting to think that, you know, maybe there's an opportunity here for, uh, uh, for people to, I don't know, make Blizzard rethink what country they're from. Uh, <laughs> everyone bought tickets before the scandal, so... Uh, yeah, it's true. A lot of people, I mean, myself included, I actually, I sold my ticket, but I ended up getting a virtual ticket before all this stuff happened. And, you know, because of the, the stuff that I would watch anyways, which is like the StarCraft competition and the opening ceremony, you know, I was going to watch a shit anyway. That's just public. Like, that's just available anywhere. You can just watch it. It's going to be streamed on, on slash StarCraft and, uh, slash Blizzard, I believe. So if they allow restreams of that, then we're going to try to watch that stuff here. Uh, we'll try to restream it here, and we'll uh, and, and we'll just basically go over the video in real time uh, with all of you guys. But I don't know if they'll allow restreaming uh, like that, so we'll see. Uh, top 16. I know, man. It's rough. My boy, the chin. Gone! So many people. Gone! Uh, yeah, top 8. Top 8. Top 16 is already happened. Um, watch it on Mixer. That's what you'll do. Protest Blizzard on Mike's stream. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, come to my stream. Uh, let's see. That's pretty much it, but, but I do want to mention this little thing because I know that we're like really, really good at, uh, at shitting on, at, on cube world, but I don't really, but, but we should, we should give some credit to the cube world community. You know, the ones that have been like hanging on by a thread for like six years and then ended up getting something that felt like they didn't, you know, like it was nowhere near as good as it should have been after six years. Well, there is a small community. Uh, it's at reddit.com slash r slash not wale, but okay. It's exactly what it says. Um, and they are busy making a bunch of mods for, for Cube World. You're still playing? Well, that's good. <laughs> I know, but, but your life, your, 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 the game could be better if you were to uh, slide over to this, uh, to this subreddit here. And, to, and, and take a look at it. There are a number of different mods that people are making. Um, and I, I fully expect if, if Wally ever releases an update, a lot of these mods are going to be broken. But some people are trying to figure out ways around that. I mean, like in this case, somebody ended up figuring out how to make Cube World, uh, you know, six, six players sp uh, split screen. So there's, there's a lot of potential here, man. These are some smart people that are getting in there and working on it and trying their best to, uh, uh, to make, to make cube world the game that they wanted to have to begin with and so it's a very small community it's got less than a thousand people in it right now um what does the subreddit style looks like look like oh yeah that's how small it is there is no <laughs> there is no fancy subreddit uh anything uh, so yeah rl craft oh is, is there a uh is there did you see that somewhere oh okay um oh somebody else talking about rl craft oh what do we are looking for cube world probably yeah RL Craft is a fucking nightmare. I love that shit. So, anyways, that is it. The Outer Worlds. I should mention this. The Outer Worlds. Uh, I beat the game last night. Uh, kind of like zoomed right towards the end, actually. Uh, once, once I, once I found out roughly how, because I, I, because Guns, who's in here, Guns tweeted out last night that he beat the game, and I asked him. I said, "How long did it take? And did you do all the side missions?" And he said. Oh, it took like 20 something hours or whatever, but you could probably do it in like, you know, between like 15 and 20 or something, something to that effect. And I was sitting at like 19 hours or 18 hours. And so I was like, oh shit, I might be pretty close. So I started focusing on the main campaign and I ended up finishing it within a couple hours. Uh, now again, I was already like 18 hours in. So I ended up beating the game in a probably like 19 hours or 20 hours or something like that. Um, I do have a review that I'm going to start. I already have a fuck ton of notes and so i basically take those notes restructure them and put them together in such a way that i can actually go through and record 
uh, a BFF report for uh, for the Outer Worlds. And just like every BFF report that you've ever seen in the past or anything from me in the past, uh, I'm I'm trying to be as you know, imp I'm not going to suck this game's dick. How to say that? All right. I know that people say it's great. I think it's great. But there's some caveats, right? There are some things that you're going to have to, like, look over. And I feel like a lot of people are looking over these things. Like, this is what happens. A game comes out. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this is the game I always wanted this other game to be. Yay. And they praise it without really looking at it objectively. And so, you know, I want to make sure that you know ahead of time before you get into it that, uh, you know, what, what those things are. Uh, overall, I will say it's a great game that costs five bucks if you get on Game Pass. So it takes two seconds to sign up for Game Pass if you haven't already. And then just go download it. Five fucking bucks. You would need to forget that you bought a Game Pass pass for a year before you equal the cost of that game as retail. So I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, if you haven't been hurt by the Fallout 76 game, you may, you may actually not like this game. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I mean, I, I enjoy a lot. I'm actually looking forward to a second playthrough. So, got it for a dollar. That's right. Some people are getting it for a dollar because of promotion or something like that. So, yeah, yeah. Go and check it out. Go and check it out if you want. It's worth that much. At the very least, it's worth one five dollars for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I will be working on that tonight, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow night. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping to get it out before, uh, before Halloween. But it might end up like waiting until uh, editing takes a long time. It might end up waiting until uh, until Friday. So that's it. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm so sorry. I know I'm, I'm like stumbling all over the place. I, I am on muscle relaxers right now for my back because I'm old. You can tell by the grays in my beard and side of my head. Um, but we made it. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. So we're good. Relax. Relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little too relaxed. My, mus my muscles aren't even relaxed, dude. It's my, it's my brain that's like, that's like checking out, man. It's stupid. <laughs> my my muscles feel fine. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Chat, thank you so much for keeping an eye on me, making sure I'll pass out. I do appreciate it. No more 40 pounds cinder block bowling. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And uh, that's it. AK Mike B. All the things. More drugs time. It's gonna go. Whoops.